Welcome and thanks for joining us for another episode of Scope. COVID-19 pandemic has affected the society in many ways, disrupting normal business and livelihood, but most importantly, putting strain on the health services, including the mental health services in the country. COVID-19 precautions and restrictions have hindered the movement of patients needing mental care and support around the country in accessing health care at the Laloki National Mental Health Hospital. Ministry of Health Directorate for Social Change and Mental Health Services found a way to bridge the gap through virtual meeting to provide a psychosocial support. Late in February 2021, mental health services, including doctors from Laloki Hospital and the National Department of Health, held a virtual meeting to confer with mental health nurses across the country. Acting Director for the Ministry of Health Directorate for Social Change and Mental Health Services, Dr. Uma Ambi, explained that it is important to reach the people who need the psychiatrist services in the four regions of the country during this time of COVID-19 precautions. COVID time is not that easy. We all have to be positive in thinking and we all have to spiritually, physically, mentally look forward to get right strategies to go on, to keep our life, to survive during this pandemic issue. She adds people to adhere to new pilapasin to look after themselves for the mental health they have to reach the people with psychiatric needs in the provinces with the help of mental health nurses. We had our shortcomings and issues to reach the people and we created the e-mental health. That means we can continue to provide services. We can uh, do training to the mental health nurses and also we can see consultancy. Theodist CEO Kumar Balia said in this current challenge of COVID-19 the country is facing, doctors and health facilities are facing a lot of resources, challenges, and therefore business sectors are trying to do what they can to support the initiatives. Um, in terms of allowing uh, the, direct, uh, the Directorate of Mental Health to connect with the various provinces and to have everybody on a face-to-face -face meeting, always makes life a lot easier to, to um, cover various issues. Um, in the COVID times when it's difficult to get on a plane and go anywhere, um, uh, this tends to be a more effective way to do things. It also is a more cost-efficient way. Theodist has been supporting similar social activities with the technical assistance during these times of COVID-19 pandemic. Laloki Psychiatric Hospital is the focal point of mental health support and management. However, in the last couple of weeks, it has temporarily stopped admissions to allow for disinfectant due to some of the staff testing positive to COVID-19, according to the CEO for Laloki Hospital. In such a situation, the system has to adapt to keep services as normal as possible. During this pandemic, especially for us at Laloki Hospital, I would say uh, we are unable to reach out to the uh, rest of the part of the nation, to the other provinces because of the pandemic. So with this e-mental health services, we will be able to follow up with our patients that have been discharged from the hospital and assisted our mental health nurses who are out there to properly manage the patients and keep them at home during this time. Meanwhile, CEO of Laloki Hospital, Dr. Wilbur, clarified misconceptions regarding the temporary closure of the hospital during the recent media conference on e-mental health support. Laloki Hospital um, is, has, is actually not closed. It hasn't closed its services. It's still open. And I want to make that clear. It's still open. We've only temporarily stopped the admissions in this next these two weeks, as I have mentioned last week, up to the 1st of April. She said they only stopped admissions for two weeks, starting last week, to do disinfectant at the hospital. This is in order to control the spread of COVID-19, since some of the staff have tested positive. By the 1st of April, we should have, the management will come up with the next plan of um, 
management on our approach on what we will do next uh, for our service. She added that there was another staff who tested positive to COVID-19 last week. After test results of staff are available, management will make further plans on the services, maybe on a lower scale if necessary, with admissions is still one is to one space, emphasizing social distancing policy of COVID. While the hospital management is stepping up to the challenge of reaching the patients outside, another problem brews within the hospital. The CEO receives a circular stating the hospital staff walking off work. This is the latest stop work notice. The notice, undersigned by aggrieved hospital staff, dated March 22, 2021, and comes with signatures attached in support of it. Also attached is a petition paper dating back June 2020, where staff petitioned government aides to revoke the appointment of the acting CEO and restraining of the mental health directorate from interfering with the affairs of the hospital. There are a number of issues raised under this petition, and that includes a call to the Minister for Health for the dire need of essential manpower, particularly in nursing. And according to the petition, a lack of nursing staff saw an increase in major critical incidences, including a death and burning of a ward. According to the hospital CEO, the petition is somewhat not true. I just received a, a petition that is written by a group of staff of Laloki Hospital. It's here in my hand, and it's a surprise to me because I haven't, I'm not part of this. And I, it's written here, notice to stop work at Laloki Psychiatric Hospital for all indefinite period. So my advice to the public, and I'd like to encourage you, please, don't believe this message or this petition is untrue. Our service is not closed, it's still open to the public and will continue until we come up with it, unless it is necessary. Otherwise, we are still open uh, to, all, to, to public for our service. When we come back, the AstraZeneca vaccine provides PNG's health system a little bit to hope to break free from the clutches of COVID-19. Welcome back to SCOPE. The coronavirus is an infectious disease caused by a newly discovered virus. Most people infected with the COVID-19 virus will experience mild to moderate respiratory illness and recover without requiring special treatment. The Department of Health has already begun issuing the AstraZeneca vaccine to protect frontline workers. Prime Minister James Marape said in PNG, there is rampant community transmission of COVID-19. He has urged citizens to follow simple COVID-19 protocols to prevent contracting the virus. Secretary for Health Dr. Osborne echoed the Prime Minister's call and warned that the coronavirus is overpowering the country's health system. Here to fly to Cairns. Prime Minister James Marape has attributed the increasing number of COVID-19 positive cases in the country to rampant community transmission. Now spread the country blame me. You no got work, long go market, no go to market. You no got go long stop the garden or stop the house. You run, you seem COVID-19 and you seem sick you yet. But COVID-19 too, you know something like you poor at long end. Suppose you seem sick, dial him the hot number. We will try to link you to a hospital that is nearest you. Marape said just like viruses that transfer from human to human, COVID-19 has arrived in our country despite us doing our best to keep our borders safe. Secretary for Health Dr. Osborne echoed the Prime Minister's call and warned that the coronavirus is overpowering the country's health system. Port Moody Hospital, of the um, 18 beds, we have 16 beds fully occupied. So, so you imagine 50% of that in seven days. Where do we go and have the symptoms moderate to severe? There is no ICU bed. Of the eight ICU, six ICU beds, four are full. Anger for the meta is closed. 
the 50 percent of the staff are in, affected. As we move on with the same uh, cumulative um, uh, incidents and the, the situations we have, where do we go in Engao? Where do we go in the rest of the, the hospitals in the country? Most people infected with the COVID-19 virus will experience mild to moderate respiratory illness and recover without requiring special treatment. COVID-19 poses a serious risk to older people and those with underlying medical problems like cardiovascular disease, diabetes, chronic respiratory disease, and cancer. The best way to prevent and slow down transmission is to be well informed about the COVID-19 virus and how it spreads. But there is a little bit of hope with the arrival of the AstraZeneca vaccine supplied by the government of Australia. Australia is assisting PNG in its response to the current surge in the number of COVID-19 reported cases in the country. The first delivery of vaccines is committed to the frontline health workers with an initial rollout for the National Capital District. Amidst the many uncertainties surrounding the vaccines, health authorities say getting vaccinated remains a choice. National Pandemic Controller David Manning repeated this in a recent press conference, but he also said there is a need for vaccination and health workers should weigh out the advantages and disadvantages of taking the vaccine. If it does come to a critical point where, you know, where you know, our health workers um, opt not to take the vaccination, you know, they are considered risk not only to themselves, but to the rest of the, the, uh, the country's population. Um, essentially what that means is that uh, we want to have a, a health service to look after us. And vaccination has kicked off in the nation's capital. The Prime Minister and a number of government officials, including the Secretary for Health and the Pandemic Controller, took the vaccine on March 30th. It's been 21 days since the implementation of the National Isolation Strategy. The National Control Center had decided against a lockdown, having seen how the first couple of lockdown had overwhelmingly impacted businesses, schools, families and the public service. The government said it does not want to stop people accessing public services, but with the rampant community transmission of the coronavirus, it is asking citizens to take ownership of the health, to respect the health and well-being of others, and follow simple COVID-19 protocols. Importantly, it is to take back our health system and health workers are being presented with this opportunity with the introduction of the AstraZeneca vaccine. Prime Minister James Marape stressed that the government was not stifling economic activities and the public service because of COVID-19. He is also appealing to all Rumamongas to stop what they were doing on social media and other platforms. Our own medical and scientific community have said, have looked at what's happening in the US, for instance, the Pfizer vaccine, and they looked at what's happening elsewhere, in China and elsewhere. Uh, we looked at what was happening in Australia. We held back until we are absolutely certain that for PNG, this is the vaccine that is best can be taken in and available for us to use. The Prime Minister further added that the government is trying to maintain a fine balance between keeping our economy running and functioning, keeping the public service accessible, but at the same time stopping unnecessary movement of people who have no reason to move around from place to place. Now with the AstraZeneca vaccine being administered, it should provide Papua New Guineans a ray of hope in taking back control of our health system. However, the arrival of the COVID-19 vaccination has raised many doubts. Now leader of the opposition, Belden Nama, has taken that on and has asked that local medical experts explain the AstraZeneca vaccines before giving it to the people. I do not want to see our government exposing our citizens to potential serious harm and offering them up as laboratory rats and guinea pigs for further testing of this vaccine. 
Well, the government officials have beaten him to it. The Prime Minister was the first to be vaccinated as a sign of assurance to healthcare workers whom he is encouraging to be vaccinated. Marape Asud targeted frontline workers that the vaccine was put through various scientific checks at organizations such as European Medicines Agency, Australian Therapeutic Goods Administration, World Health Organization and the Medical and Scientific Advisory Committee and found to be safe. He also appealed to those who were skeptical about the vaccine not to infringe on the rights of others who want to take it. The Prime Minister said he had further instructed the National Department of Health to put together information on all the vaccines available on the market and make it available to the public. This is so they can make informed choices. He said he was aware of differing views about the AstraZeneca vaccine and others on the market. However, he said he could not ignore the increasing surge in COVID-19 cases in the country. Meantime, with the current four weeks isolation measures in place, controller David Manning has also warned of FTVs imposed on those spreading false rumors on the COVID-19 pandemic. He also cautioned people to adhere to the COVID-19 protocol measures set by the government. After the break, PDL7 elect board directors and closes the curtains on a 12-year wait by landowners. PNG LNG project landowners from the Petroleum Development License No. 7 area in the Ella province began the election process to elect director representatives to the board of their trust company, Gaze Resources Heights for Limited. The historical occasion soon closes the curtains on a 12-year wait by the landowners, who are now on the cusp of finally receiving royalties from the PNG LNG project and to deliberate on millions of kina for business investment and community projects. The PDL7 area hosts the PNG LNG project gas conditional plant in Hyde's Ella province. The PDL7 election program was officially launched on Thursday, March 18th at the Hyde's Gas Development Company Para Camp in Hyde's. The election program is the final process where six landowners are elected to be representatives on the board of the landowner company Gas Resources Hides for Limited, GRH4, a trustee company under the Mineral Resources Development Company, holds the PDL7 landowner's interest in the PNG LNG project. Like every landowner company, a full board is required by its trust deed and company constitution to deliberate on the affairs of the company, which includes royalty and equity benefit payouts. Only the clan chairpersons of the Category A clans in PDL7 pair their respective ministerial determinations from 2016 will participate in this election process. MRDC Managing Director Augustin Mano said the election program was a successful one. MRDC has so far successfully facilitated this election process for the PNG LNG plant facility in 2017 and pipeline landowners in 2019. The ministerial determination and moving this PDL 7, you first line of working law with a four black grand fields there. You first money at ministerial determination. You first line law working over my account there. You work in business. So plenty of talk, you work in my account now. Why the MRDC is not pay? Because you need to at leaders believe you all by a gun. Now, but look how much money is there. So that, because now currently, me, governor, and secretary, people are trustee, director. Minister assisting the Prime Minister and Komo Magarima MP Manase Makiba has urged PDL7 landowners to trust the election process of the directors. Minister Makiba, a former lawyer with the MRDC, helped set up the election program, which was first used four years ago for the PNG LNG plant site landowner company, Gas Resources PNG LNG Plant Limited. 
how long Maki more leaders and me bless you didn't show. Me clear, before me go to election, me conduct in this election long, uh, plan side long, PPFL, Petroleum Processing Facility License Number Two, Emlo Papa, Lelia, Pore Parana, Madame Lafoblay, what am I? Buera. I think Chris Vajavena, Andy, you go come with me, sir. And me talking about one time, but you make him one time. So now I'm giving like making now. So this is the rules, the conduct in Malaysia, and be fair, and be transparent, and be like setting up good. The landowners were commended for working together to arrive at the election of the directors for GRH4. One of the stumbling blocks to the landowners progressing to the election of directors and prior to the opening of accounts were constant court battles. LIG in 2009. Now you may you go 2021. Sip when you go on 2014. Now you may start 2021. Me have brothers. Support the government, many blow me, all life blow me. Over the day, not slow here. Money blow PDR 7. Over the leaders, me blow by selecting over the 116 blow block. Now, over the 96 clan staff, sub clan. We blow over the war border. Now, money blow you me. PDR 7, my staff blow. And then I'll come up also. Money blow PDR 7, my staff blow. Now, money, all that, not the PDR, no see. Department of Petroleum and Energy Secretary David Manau commended the landowners for setting aside their differences and working together. Manau said he had spent the better part of 2020 trying to resolve court cases. Plenty court cases you will go through. Los the Department, me like talks with whole of 2020, me come up to the courthouse, and me send up to the court, and try to set him aside all court cases. Lo alai mosem this law process by free. Now you come today and hold him this law elections. And also lo lo alai more benefits lo flow. After all, directors go sit down and making decisions going into the future. Secretary Manau said it has been a journey, one he has been a part of, and to see the landowners almost at the finish line was a historic occasion. You know what Monarch Roman Bakam Mawakim? MD staff Amasies in MRDC. Mr. staff Amasies. Governor staff Amasies. This law leadership. You know, no problem, man, come inside. From day one, you play talk to the UPSA, Coco Po, and come sit down, come. Me blow the same line, stop now. Time for me blow, me blow must make it happen. Time for me blow, me blow must make it happen. Following the election of the directors, the MRDC will sit with the GRH4 board and present to them the amount of funds held in trust. However, the implementation of the national isolation strategy will delay this next step. This is the process. So there was a nine COVID now or something, so Emba, you may wait for this lad. So was environment and good luck? You mean all the election business, Emba will black now. This lad wait for royalty now, equity for the last seven years. It's just a stone's throw away, yeah. In, in a long way to up, M close to that. So was no restriction, can be less than a month, or you may be looking back. So M last process, sir. Director said, you may be finish now and process for payment. Under the current PNG-LNG agreements, royalty and equity from the PNG-LNG project is to be dissected in a 40-30-30 ratio. 40% constitutes cash that will go to landowners, 30% will be spent on future investments, while the remaining 30% goes to community projects. Hela Governor Philip Undialu urged the landowners to seriously consider business investments for their future. You mean must build in foundations for that. Like the Yumi must kiss him. Walking box red, business thread, see that last month's red now. Benefits my floor like that. So process Yumi must be any. And for some, so it's a test, test of leadership too. Put in people a challenge, like Yumi comes in and reorganizing Yumi, so me, I must not this time. The incoming directors of GRH4 Limited were encouraged to focus on bringing back community projects to their area. Minister Makiba said he will support them in a Kina for Kina partnership. The Milagi Yumi all. Guess which is Heights 4? Yumi partner with the district, they roll him out. All little projects, the community, the Yumi. Suppose guess which is Heights 4? You plug him 30% now. Put him as a 100,000, or make him one the classroom or eight post. Okay, district, we will come put him. Not on the 100,000. So this is a partnership, we will emphasize, but he will go ourselves.
The landowners were urged to be an example to other landowners within the PDL area by working together. The results of the director's election is yet to be announced. That ends another episode of Scope, a kind reminder to apply simple measures to prevent the transmission of the coronavirus. Regularly wash your hands with soap and water, cough for sneeze into your elbow, and exercise social distancing. If you are feeling sick, please stay at home. You can also call the COVID-19 hotline number for more information or assistance. Thank you for your company. Bye for now.